Training the Mind There are so many ways to present meditation. I must have taught on it a thousand times, but each time is different, and each time it is direct and fresh. Fortunately, we live in a time when all over the world, many people are becoming familiar with meditation. It is being increasingly accepted as a practice that cuts through and soars above cultural and religious barriers and enables those who pursue it to establish a direct contact with the truth of their being. It is a practice that at once transcends the dogma of religions and is the essence of religions. Generally, we waste our lives distracted from our true selves in endless activity. Meditation, on the other hand, is the way to bring us back to ourselves, where we can really experience and taste our full being beyond all habitual patterns. Our lives are lived in intense and anxious struggle in a swirl of speed and aggression in competing, grasping, possessing, and achieving, forever burdening ourselves with extraneous activities and preoccupations. Meditation is the exact opposite. To meditate is to make a complete break with how we normally operate, for it is a state free of all cares and concerns in which there is no competition no desire to possess or grasp at anything, no intense and anxious struggle, and no hunger to achieve, an ambitiousless state where there is neither acceptance nor rejection, neither hope nor fear, a state in which we slowly begin to release all those emotions and concepts that have imprisoned us into the space of natural simplicity. The Buddhist meditation masters know how flexible and workable the mind is. If we train it, anything is possible. In fact, we already perfectly trained by and for samsara. Trained to get jealous, trained to grasp, trained to be anxious and sad and desperate and greedy. Trained to react angrily to whatever provokes us. We are trained, in fact, to such an extent that these negative emotions rise spontaneously without our even trying to generate them. So everything is a question of training and the power of habit. Devote the mind to confusion and we know only too well, if we're honest, that it will become a dark master of confusion, adept in addictions, subtle and perversely supple in its slaveries, devoted in meditation to the task of freeing itself from illusion. And we will find that, with time, patience, discipline, and the right training, our mind will begin to unknot itself and know its essential bliss and clarity. Training the mind does not in any way mean forcibly subjugating or brainwashing the mind. To train the mind is first to see directly and concretely how the mind functions. A knowledge that you derive from spiritual teachings and through personal experience in meditation practice. Then you can use that understanding to tame the mind and work with it skillfully and make it more and more pliable so you can become the master of your own mind and employ it to its fullest and most beneficial end. The 8th century Buddhist master Shantideva said, If this elephant of mind is bound on all sides by the cord of mindfulness, all fear disappears and complete happiness comes. All enemies, all the tigers, lions, elephants, bears, serpents of our emotions, and all the keepers of hell, the demons and the horrors, all these are bound by the mastery of your mind. And by the taming of that one mind, all are subdued, because from the mind are derived all fears 
and immeasurable sorrows. Just as a writer only learns a spontaneous freedom of expression after years of often grueling study, and just as the simple grace of a dancer is achieved only with enormous patient effort, so when you begin to understand where meditation will lead you, will you approach it as the greatest endeavor of your life, one that demands of you the deepest perseverance, enthusiasm, intelligence, and discipline.